Hmm. Nah. Ooh. Mine. I wonder what Subby's up to. Oh, new video. Well, it's about time. Hello, everyone. Today, we're making 1 12th scale laptops. Yeah, we're making two laptops today because I couldn't decide if I should go with a simple design or a more deluxe one. So, I guess I'm doing both. That way, well, at least you can have your pick of the methods. The simple design is much quicker to make, and all the details are painted on. The deluxe model is a bit more complicated to create, but it features a raised keyboard and an interchangeable screen. It's perfect if your figure wants to do some online shoe shopping. The materials you'll need for this project are paperboard, such as from a cereal box, Mod Podge, scissors, pencil, paper, paintbrush, ruler or a T-square, sandpaper, sealant, and acrylic craft paint. For the deluxe laptop, you'll also need a thin sheet of craft foam, Zacto knife, sheet magnet, and a needle. First, I'm going to make a pattern for the laptop by measuring a rectangle that is 3.5 centimeters wide and 2.4 centimeters tall. Cut out the pattern and then trace it on your cereal box five times. Cut out the rectangles from the cereal box. Including the paper pattern, you should have these pieces now for a simple laptop design. Apply some Mod Podge to one of the paperboard rectangles and attach a second rectangle to it. Then apply some more Mod Podge to the printed side of another rectangle. Attach the paper pattern about halfway down the paperboard rectangle. The reason we're using this paperboard pattern is it's going to become the hinge for the laptop. I'm going to apply some more glue on top of the paper. Then we need to wait for those pieces to dry before we can move on. Next, apply some glue to another rectangle and I stick it to the interior of the paper of the paper hinge. You want to test shutting the laptop to just to make sure that you've left enough room for the laptop to close. And then just apply some more glue and stick on the last paperboard rectangle. If the edges on your laptop are a little uneven, you can even them up with some sandpaper. Just remember to do this only after your glue is completely dry. I apply another layer of Mod Podge to both sides of the paper hinge to strengthen it up. Then I set the laptop against something like a paint bottle or a glue bottle so that the glue will dry while the laptop is in an open position. I've decided I'm going to paint this entire laptop silver, but you can really use whatever colors you want. Then I'm going to paint the screen using a color called Slate. I paint the keyboard, the touchpad, and the little power button with some light gray. After the paint is dry, I use a mechanical pencil to sketch in the individual keys and to outline the keyboard, touchpad, and power button. It really helps to do this while taking a look at an actual keyboard, so that way you can get the sizes of the keys close. Um, well, pretty close. Mine certainly aren't perfect, but they look a lot better than they would if I just did this by memory. Now things are going to be a little different if you're going to make the deluxe version of the laptop. You basically start with the same pieces as the simple laptop, but we're going to have a few more steps. The first additional step is to take one of the paperboard rectangles and mark a smaller rectangle inside of it. So that way we're going to be making a border along the edges. I mark the lines on my smaller rectangle about one millimeter from all four edges. Then cut out the smaller rectangle so you're left with a frame that is about one millimeter thick. I used a combination of a Zacto knife and my scissors to carefully cut out this frame. And this frame is what's going to go around the computer screen on the deluxe laptop. Use the frame to sketch a rectangle on your sheet magnet and cut it out. The magnet will form the computer screen itself and it will allow us to attach interchangeable displays on the screen. Then I'm going to cut a smaller rectangle in another piece of paperboard to make a spot to insert the keyboard. I'll give you my measurements for everything soon. I make an identical rectangle on a second piece of paperboard and cut them both out. Next, I cut a rectangle from the craft foam that will fit in the holes I just made in the paperboard. You can use the paperboard piece with the hole in it as the pattern. Including the paper pattern, 
Here are the pieces you need to make the deluxe laptop. To assemble the deluxe laptop, you want to apply Mod Podge to both sides of one of the paperboard rectangles. We want all of the printed sides of the paperboard to be on the interior of this project because the printed side is, well, I guess you could say it's shiny and slippery so it's hard to paint and it takes more layers of paint. Then stick on one of the smaller pieces with the rectangle cut out of it. Apply glue to the top half of this layer and attach the paper pattern, which again is going to become the laptop's hinge. Apply more glue to the paper and top layer and stick on the second rectangle with the keyboard cutout. I apply glue in the hole of the cutout and just kind of squish in the foam rectangle, which is going to become the keyboard soon. Allow that time to dry and then apply some Mod Podge to the paper hinge. Glue on the paperboard frame and the magnet screen to the hinge. This part's a little tricky. Then you want to try closing the laptop to make sure you left enough room on the hinge to allow the laptop to shut. Apply more glue to the back side of the screen and hinge and attach the last paperboard rectangle. Just like the simple version of the laptop, we're going to apply more Mod Podge to both sides of the hinge and allow it to dry while the laptop is open. Then I use a pencil and start sketching in the lines for the individual keys on the keyboard. This particular design I'm doing is going to have a number pad to the right of the regular keys. Then I just cut the lines out carefully with an X-Acto knife. You don't have to cut too deeply. To add a bit more separation between the keys, I use a needle in the handle of my X-Acto knife to trace the lines I cut. This just kind of separates the foam a bit more. I made a cut in the foam between the regular keyboard and the number pad, and this is where I'm going to glue in a small strip of paperboard to separate the two a little more. Mix some black acrylic craft paint with some water to create a black wash, and use this to paint the keyboard. The paint will seep between the gaps between the individual keys to make them show up better. I paint the interior of this laptop black and the outer case silver. Then I protect the paint with a layer of ultra matte varnish, and I do the same for my simple laptop too. It's just a little extra protection to help the paint from chipping. To make the interchangeable screens for the deluxe version of the laptop, you can either print off an image from your computer or just cut out an image from a magazine. You want your cutout though to be the same size as the computer screen, which for mine was 3.2 centimeters wide and 2.1 centimeters tall. If you need help scaling down an image from your computer to the correct size, check out my video on how to make a miniature television for more detailed instructions on sizing images for the screen. Since I'm using a computer printout and I don't want to worry about ink smearing from my fingers, I'm going to apply a piece of tape to the image before gluing it to the sheet magnet. You can make as many interchangeable screens as you want. Just make sure to double check that your magnets are going to stick together before you glue the image to the wrong side of the magnet. Been there, done that. Good news is you could peel it off. And then you're done. But before you go, I have some viewer photos to share from Julian who made a couple of my projects. First up is the Spider-Man web backpack. And then he also modified the instructions for my firewall guide to make an aura for his Dragon Ball Z figure. And it even glows in the dark. That's pretty cool. And thanks for sharing your photos. If you'd like to try any of these projects too, check out my crafting for action figures and other toys playlist for the instructions. And if you've tried any of my crafts and want me to share your photos as well, just give me a link to your photos in the comments below or send them to me on a social networking site. Just remember to say that I have your permission to share your photos. And that's it for today, but if you're new here, you may want to hit that subscribe button to stay updated for new content, since I'm not currently organized enough to release videos on a specific day of the week. <laughs> I'll work on that. And thank you all for watching.